All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon. And in this video, we are going to be in the 135 pound division where we have an update on Gervonta Tank Davis and what's going on with him as he takes to the internet and says that he is being sabotaged in his career and his life is being put in danger. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Fanon, and in this video, we're gonna be in the 135 pound division where we've got some bad news, man. It's not a good thing going on with Gervonta Davis. He seems as if he's very frustrated and he expresses some legitimate concerns uh, that he has going on that may very well prevent him from being successful in his next fight. Um, and it is related to some of the legal problems that he has been going through over the last uh, year. And it's very, very unfortunate. I'm going to give my thoughts on it because, hey, man, you know what they say. If you can't do the, if you can't do the time, don't do the crime. And I think some of this very well may be on um, Gervonta Davis himself. And there could be some life lessons here. But we will also talk about what it will say about what's going on in the 135 pound division. Now, before I get into the details of it, let me welcome you back to the channel. If you are new to the channel, please accept my invitation to hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And if you are a longtime subscriber and supporter of the channel, thank you so much for your continued support. We're going to talk about this issue because, look, man, it's interesting to me. We've been tracking this the entire time it's been going on. Um, well over a year ago, uh, Gervonta Davis was charged with um, a hit and run in Baltimore. Uh, his car, I do believe it was a, may have been a Lamborghini, Ferrari or Lamborghini. I think it was a Lamborghini. Crashed into a car and it was Gervonta Davis's car and he left the scene. As a result of that, there was a lady that was in or some people that were injured, uh, specifically a lady that was pregnant, a lady that was pregnant that was injured in the car. So um, they charged Gervonta Davis with hit and run and failure to, I think something related to failure to um, provide aid to somebody that you injured in the accident. Um, Right. So basically like a hit and run would wind up happening is Gervonta had had uh, pleaded that down from a felony to a misdemeanor. And he was given, I think, six months in jail time and maybe two years of probation, along with a bunch of community service. He was originally released out on house arrest. But then um, this judge, the judge. Uh, did not like that he was staying at a high level condominium, uh, a million dollar condominium uh, in Baltimore. And that he also I think he may also been leaving the state or whatever and wasn't staying at the place where he was originally supposed to be. But so then he winds up getting put in actually going into jail for several months. And now I, he got out at least a month ago. I don't I think that six months, I think he may still be on house arrest because I could have sworn that he went in in April. So that's uh, May, June, July, August, September, October. So, you know, I think that he may have still had a little bit of time left, but whatever the case is. Uh, he now says that the judge is not allowing him to leave Baltimore to train and that his life is in jeopardy being in Baltimore with all of the crime and all of the robberies and things going on in Baltimore. Also, uh, that he's not able to train properly. I don't know what that means about not being able to train properly, but whatever the case is, he feels like he's being sabotaged. Um, now here's the problem, man. This is, this is why I say like, um, it may be like he didn't do himself any favors when he was going through the process in court and he didn't apologize to the lady that she hit did not make sound. The judge was very struck 
uh, that he did not sound um, contrite at all. He didn't sound like he resented it at all. And also, Javante Davis, after that point, went out and said some things in the press about the judge being crazy and kind of really venting about the judge. And look, man, people are human and people in power will exercise that power if they feel like they're disrespected or their courtroom is disrespected. And so, you know, I don't know the truth of whether or not he's actually being sabotaged in this this scenario. But I will tell you, man, that it that he did again, he probably didn't help himself at all really didn't help himself out at all by not giving an apology to the lady that got hit in a way that made the judge believe that he felt sorry for what he did right now. He can't tell me that he didn't do it because he said that he did it. You pled guilty to it. So you got to sound contrite. You got to extend yourself to a person that got hit and say in the car, got injured in the car and you know, have some type of tone of remorse for what you did, you, what you did. And if you don't, don't be surprised if the judge or somebody in authority that takes this matter seriously, you know, holds a grudge against you. Right. And doesn't help also that you're a multimillionaire uh, and, you know, you have your crashing Lamborghinis and you got, you know, a big condominium and you and then, you know, you just get another 30, 40, 50 million dollar payday. And the judge may very well be like, look, man, I don't like I don't like I just don't like the arrogance. I don't like the the not being contrite, all of the things above all of those things. And sometimes, man, you know, that stuff is going to linger on for you, especially if you got to deal with somebody that is without whether you like it or not, is going to have authority is going to have authority over you. If she does, if she doesn't like what you're doing, I, I mean, she had what six, I think you had six months and then you have community service. She's going to be sitting there making sure that you're doing community service for the next three years without leaving the state for however long, however long that is, because that's in her power to do so. But, you know, hopefully this it, it is a scenario that will work out better for him. And he'll be able to figure out a way to get his training done. Uh, And, you know, and if there's legitimate um, risks to there to his um, to his safety, then he'll be able to take precautions. I don't know whether or not a judge is going to take that into consideration, though, seeing as there I'm sure there's a bunch of people that go through her courtroom and they are in house arrest and they don't get to leave the state and do these things because do other things because their life is in jeopardy in Baltimore. There's a lot of people's lives in jeopardy in Baltimore. Right. So the judge would may not feel like, especially for somebody that she doesn't feel was contrite about it to begin with, really feel like, you know, OK, let me go out of my way to really look out for this guy. I would hope that she would because I like Javante Davis. I wish the best for Javante. But, you know, at the same time, man, you got to like like when you're in situations where you really are, you know, in a tough situation where you have somebody that is authority figure over you and, you know, to be contrite and to feel and make that person feel like you're cooperating with them and giving them, with them what you need. Sometimes that stuff, sometimes you just got to tuck your pride a little bit and do it and, and otherwise get ready to take, you know, every judgment, every um, every subjective determination that she can make to go against you. Right. But anyway, that's just my take on the matter. You let me know what you think in the comment section and that. And with that, I'm out. Peace.